Hello, and welcome to Chris White's presentations, Basics with Databases and ASP.NET. What are you going to be learning today? Well, we're going to be creating tables and database files. We're going to be using data sets, which are tools for talking to the database, basically reading and writing to the tables. We're going to be understanding web controls, which is ASP.NET controls, which both work on client side and server side. We're going to be doing templates with grid views, which grid view is an ASP.NET control with just more functionality using templates. What we're going to be using? We're going to be using Visual Studio 2008 and we're going to be using Microsoft SQL Server 2000 Express or higher. How ASP.NET works? Well, we've got your client machines, the web browsers, and then we've got an ASP.NET server which holds all your ASP.NET code. We've also got a database server, depending if your ASP.NET website requires one. How it all functions? Well, the client calls the ASP.NET page, and the ASP.NET server will run that page, which is going to be full of your code, and then return HTML back to the client. What we're going to be making? It's going to be a to-do list application, full of your to-dos, and then basically you're going to be ticking off those to-do lists. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back. As we're now going to get started developing this to-do list, we're going to get an understanding of step-by-step -step how we're going to make this. First of all, load up your Visual Studio 2008, and then let's begin. Click on File, New, and Website. We have an ASP.NET website. What we want to call it is to-do app. We've got our project all made for us now. And the next thing we want to do is right click on the project. We want to add a new item. We want to add an SQL Server database file. Let's call that to do DB. Okay, say yes to this to push the database uh, file into the app data folder. Make sure you've got your server explorer showing up here. To do this, if it's not showing, go view and it should be server explorer, just there. We should have our database in the database connection tree and what we want to do is expand tables. Currently there's no tables there because it's a blank database so we're going to need to create one. Let's right click on that and click add new table. We'll then be presented with a viewer to start creating our database table. So first of all, we're going to need a primary key. So we're going to call it to do ID. And because it's just going to be a key, we're just going to have it as an integer. The next one we're going to have is the summary of our to do. For this type, we're going to need bar char max. The reason why we want max is because we want maximum characters in our summary. We then want to have a completed field and we will set that to bit. Basically it's a true and false field value. We then want to add date started, giving us the date when it was made. So that will be date field. Brilliant. Save your database. It's going to ask for the table name, so we'll call it the to-do list. Brilliant. We now have prepared our database with a table in it. What we then need to do is add the data set. We right click on the project again and go new item. We then search for the data set which is there. Let's call it to do data set. 
Again, it's asking to put the file in the app code folder. Click yes to that. And we are ready to build our data set. We then still have our server explorer and we want to drag the to-do list table onto the data set. Like so. By doing this, this will create the data set table and it will bring the SQL connection into the web.config. I have to apologise, I haven't done the primary key I'm afraid, I've just noticed that. So I'm going to go back to the to-do list table and we'll be presented with the designer view of the table. And we're going to right click on it and say set as primary key. Now because it's a primary key we have to make sure that all the data is going to be unique in that uh, column. Uh, and I don't want to do that manually so we can do this automatically by going into the column properties and selecting identity specification. We need to open it up and say is identity to yes. And what that does is it keeps on incrementing the number um, by one, making sure that the primary key is going to be unique all the time every t every time you uh, insert a new record. Right, so we're going to save that, and we are going to dip into some code. So when I go on default ASPX, it's probably it's easier at the moment to be in the HTML code. That's by clicking on the source here. So let's get started typing in the code. So Let's put in a header and we'll call it to do list application. Okay, right, we've got the header in. The next thing we're going to want to do is add a grid view. So if we can go to the toolbox where the server explorer was, and then we can go and open up the data column and put in the grid view. Now, a grid view is like a complicated, well, not complicated, but it's a way of showing data in a table but by using the data sets as our data source so we've got a grid view inserted into our HTML let's name that to something called grid to do ok, save that and let's go back into design mode ok grid view selected at the moment. If we click on this box here, and click edit columns. Okay. Now the first field we're going to do is going to be the summary field from the database. So if we go ahead and add that in, it's bound fields because we just want to show the text, we're not going to be able to edit it we're going to go into the bound field properties and it's going to have a header text. This is the header of the table column. So we're going to call the header summary. And if we scroll down we will see data and data field. So we want to use the summary data field. Let's add a checkbox field for the completed column. Scroll back up, header text and the date field completed. Okay, the reason why this is going to be a checkbox is because we're going to want users to be able to click on the checkbox to say that the uh, the to do is done. Okay, let's go ahead and click OK. Alright, you'll notice now you'll have two columns and three more columns added on. Now the two columns are the ones that you've specified in, you'll notice, but the three columns are rather random at the moment, and that's because the grid view can automatically generate the columns for you by looking at the data set and picking up all those columns in the data set. We don't want this, for instance, because we don't want to show the primary key, for instance. We want that more on a system level rather than at a user's level. So in order to do this, we've specified the columns that we want. However, we want to get rid of the generating columns, so column 0, column 1, and column 2. In order to do this, we just need to select the grid view, go to the properties, 